Welcome and hello to Fest2 Live. My name is Frank and today I have a support from my colleague. Hello, Jose. Hi, Frank. I'm here, the, the carpenter between us, and I'm glad to welcome you and my apprentice, Frank, <laughs> here <laughs> to, to guide you through the whole process of timber framing. Right, timber framing, that is a topic today. And you see here in the background, we have prepared uh, a frame construction, a wooden frame construction, and uh, Jose, more or less, this is a, a, a gable wall from exactly. a house, isn't it? Exactly. So what you see here, Frank, is a like the modern building style, timber frame style. Uh, so not the traditional. Maybe you know it from Germany. These in these old houses uh, with these all uh, bigger beam dimension, especially. And they are pretty nice as well, but now that's the way how we do it. And it's more, it's different wood dimensions and it's all about standards mm -hmm. and standard measures, uh, repeating and so on. That means we work today or we show the people how you can uh, yeah, use our tools, our festival tools to build things like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So festival has great tools for carpenters and we will guide you through. We prepared everything before we recorded it, uh, how we did it, and uh, we will go through the whole process together. Okay, Jose, let us start. So when I start with a project like that one, <laughs> uh, I think the, the important thing is uh, money, of course. <laughs> you need money, you need money <laughs> and uh, a good idea. Good ideas, of course. And <laughs> what helps if you, if you sit down and make a plan? You you don't have to exactly see this. You will uh, we will have a look at this more detail later. Mm. But yeah, we draw this plan. Okay. I guess the joiner um, does it similar, right? Mm -hmm. We use normally a CAD program, a drawing program, where you get all the measures and uh, your cutting list, everything out of it. That is important. So this is the beginning. Okay, and then we cut these timbers here. Yeah. So and wha what what kind of a machine, what kind of tool you prefer from Fest Tool to cut these uh, timber, this dimension of timbers? So if you think about that, you have to cut a lot of repetitive cuts. It makes sense to make a setup where you can work conveniently, and of course you could use Frank um, a circular saw, the HK eighty five, but. I would suggest uh, the KPEX, the KS120, and therefore I would like to show you the setup, how we how we build it up, and how you could build it up in uh, as well. Okay. So let's have a look. So let's here you see um, just two saw horses and these bigger beams, what we had uh, like spares, and you can see here the, the building, the setup process. Um, just a little hint here, here are some green knobs, and always remember the green knobs uh, means that you can set up something. So important is to pull out this transport lock, then you can lift up the machine and continue. So, what you see here now is the extension, what we also can use for the UG stand, for the KPEX. Here the stand is set up on the same surface, on the same flat surface, and uh, it's really nice. In Festool, everything fits together, and it's the same height as the KPEX, and also here the extension legs. So just flip it in, align it a little bit. Here for more stability, I would recommend to screw it and fix it um, to the wood. What I've done here now, I I checked the the yeah the I aligned everything together that everything is um, right. Yeah, you can use anything um, what is straight. Always good to have a 
FS rail as well. <laughs> so one more screw here, one more screw here, and then we are ready to go. As our timbers are normally really longer, um, and we can use here the extension, um, but this is often not long enough, and I, I recommend here to use this roller stand. Um, this is a quick and dirty fix, um, and then you can easily handle these big timbers, these, these longer uh, timber materials. Often we have the case that these are 30 meters long, 13, and um, yeah, so, and then you can handle it quite good. Of course, we use a dust extractum system, CTM 36, together with a CT pre-separator, and then this is the whole setup. And then you can see how easy it is to handle these longer beams and with the roller stand which you can say feeds in the material to the to the chop chopping station and yeah that's it basically you can easily see the cutting line the marking with a double line laser here uh, this is really a great feature of the saw and make sure you cut on the right side of the line and then you can go cut for cut for cut and that's it so what do you think frank wow i i'm, I'm really oppressed because uh i i saw that you prepare the ks uh 120 to a yeah to a to a really workstation in combination with that uh, timber with that big beans beam you have a really nice work uh place here and you can cut these uh, really and it's really stable yes, and yes and you could do your own setup uh, you see everything is on one level and i think you can be creative as well and cool make your own setup so now we have cut all these timber all these uh pieces here but this this would be the studs right, by the way right so all we and we all all the studs and all the framing would we cut right. everything together and this looks a little bit like a scaffold but in which position you will bring these timber to 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 that frame construction so you need uh, maybe <laughs> of course you you <laughs> you no, plan we, <laughs> we we don't make it like this <laughs> we 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 measure it of right? course and <coughs> this this is a highly standardized type of that is exactly uh, the repetition. point so and this distance here maybe yeah so what is important in the timber framing is the 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 x um the distance from x to x okay and what we use is he uh, here for example is the 62.5 centimeter uh standard okay so this means um you can if you if you check that yeah I have this to should check be, it. This should yes, be 62.5 yeah and we have the same measurement always coming to uh, that again one. so this would be the the, the um, like the from the standard i wonder me why you need that small piece here but i understand you have here these standards yeah. so and here to here then also exactly so ah, imagine okay. the wall is bigger then you will always have these repetitions ah, and this okay. is the reason about uh, um, about this mm -hmm. maybe you wonder is that we use the board which are standardized and um so we make sure that we can use a whole board and it will fit from start to start these usb boards e for example exactly okay so which will come later but i think let us look in the next video how you bring these different frames in the right position yeah let's check that so next step check the plan um what i do now is um we i have all the the measurements of course this is uh, individual of of the building type you do and then you have to take your time to ma make the right markings on the wood and what we do is um you make the line and the cross on the side 
where you want to place the stud. And um, yeah, for better visibility and better alignment, um, I use the angle, the, the carpenter square. Um, this is the style we use here in Germany. Uh, and I guess you have different kind of squares used in the different countries. That's the way how we do it. And uh, here I mark the position of each stud. And yeah, basically marking all the lower, the base plate, and also the, the, the higher um, top plate of the wall frame. And then we can go and place all the studs one after another. Okay, now I'm just finishing here the, the marking. And this is looking I really I good. I can you stop it uh, for a short time? For sure. But uh, what I'm really f lucky or uh, happy is that you have always here this line and this the cross, so that you exactly know in which position is uh, later the rafter or the, the... Yeah, so often the case is that the, the more experienced guy in the crew <coughs> do does all the marking because this is essential for the right um, wall set up and when uh, you mark it right then the apprenticeship <laughs> <laughs> can do the job right afterwards. <laughs> Thank you, Jose. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but by the way, you were great, Frank. Of course. I of really course. I r you, 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 you are hired, <laughs> <laughs> not, not fired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's looking good. Any questions? No, th this is really, I like that uh, marks and that is really helpful for the construction later. And uh, now all these uh, yeah, pieces are cut it now. And yeah. then we bring it together that we can make a really nice uh, we did the frame cut. We did all construction. The, we did the cut and we did also the marking and then we can go rock. And roll. <laughs> and now <laughs> let us let us look this next video because I remember we have here a lot of fun. We do it a little bit faster. Yeah, so, <laughs> so what you see now here is a, a, um, a speed view of that. Um, we screw it together. Sometimes uh, it's there are screw um, nail guns also used, uh, but often the the screwdriver is really good. So. Maybe I change the place here and you need always a helping hand. Frank, thanks for your helping <laughs> hand. And uh, I think the clear markings helped as yep. well um, to see where is the right position of, of, of the timber on uh, and the studs. We use also these clamps because sometimes these timbers are not the really uh, straight. And uh, you see it uh, in the next uh, yeah. position. So <coughs> Timber always is uh, not always, but sometimes it's a little bit twisted, and you need you need this definitely you need this clamp. So this is you see here sometimes um, you need a little little bit of help, and I think s this everything is screwed together almost. Let's. So this is looking good. So I think we forgot something. Yeah. Right? A really good helper for special applications and in a really uh, tidy area or space. Now we have here the TPC and one of is one of its highlights. You see here the angle chuck which can be mounted easily and then you can click it in the right position. And um, then put back, or you can put back the bit directly or you can use the whole central tech attachment on it. And now, this is just for showing you the great feature of this angle chuck because you maybe you see it here, um, 
it's not on the right position and maybe you know that from your own work that sometimes you come to the place and then you see uh, you realize I should change the position and with uh, with these angle jack is really easy just click it and then um, you can put it in the right position so you can use this also for drilling uh, for of, of course and use all the other uh, attachment types we have so that's it everything is put together and uh, this is the way how you do wall by wall by wall by wall cool i realize uh, one thing and uh, you see it here also so i thought that we have here two grooves in that length of timber so why you do that because normally you can make only a screw directly so is this more for more stabi stability yeah so um this is often used sometimes you can use this groove uh, all in in all studs okay this helps you in the assembling and uh, especially here in the in the door with these door lintel mm -hmm. um, then you you know okay you are in the right position when you assemble it okay and of course it gives you a little bit more of stability as well and um, yeah I think the joiners and also the carpenters we still like to fit wood on wood together that uh, you have a nice <laughs> joining <laughs> exactly <laughs> in which way you have to do that groove so what kind of tool or what tool you use for that what festo tool so this is really a nice feature of our hk85 because ah. you can um, assemble the groove cutting unit and um, you can check how to assemble it um, so uh, by the way this is the detail we are talking about um, so we have these grooves here at the door lintel and we have here now the hk85 mounted with this routing head and what you see here is um, of course the routing head which you can use from 16 to 25 millimeters um, width and the maximum depth is 35 millimeters and you can read that here on the scale printed on on front and in our case we want to use um, 10 millimeters of depth and then you know here you should use 60 on the scale I think this is pretty clear and yeah then of course set it to the right depths and in this case i really like that that you can use the fsk rails we have three uh, sizes of them available and let's hold on a little bit maybe you wonder why i don't align it here on this line um, i prefer to work from right to left uh, to not fall into the, the groove I made before and this gives uh, so the, 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 the guide rail is always supported full and so the first aligning um, you should be you should um, do it uh, visually or you make a small marking on for example 25 millimeters on the inside so then routing <laughs> is really easy you clamp the woods you want to route together uh, by one and then you go in one round through each of the uh, the woods to all of the woods together so i will step aside there's frank. a lot of splintering <laughs> i knew that <laughs> i knew that you would so, uh, say that frank um the, the, ca the cabinet maker and joiner they don't like that when it's so much re but remember this is not a kitchen frank okay <laughs> this is a this is a house and this will be covered up uh, look at that but don't you like that perfect this is really <laughs> nice and I, I love that um this is a house it will be wrapped up with uh with boards and uh you will not see that right <laughs> of course, after that we have sometimes also plasterboard on the uh, walls, and you can't see the splintering. So, I think everything is cutted. But I wonder me sometimes why we have here 
also a timber because uh, from my understanding this is a door <laughs> so and here is uh, also a kind you of uh, you don't like to to step over the right the right door sill. I, I like this even yeah. surface always me, me too okay me too but i like to bring the whole piece at once and very stable to the job site and this is for transportation uh, issues you let it uh, in the element and after you build up the whole thing uh, and and fix it to the co uh, to the concrete for example or I to understand. the uh, uh, lower level then you cut it out yeah yeah okay so that is what you do after the uh, uh, yeah. assembling exactly cool yeah so now we mounted everything, mm -hmm. screwed everything together. Mm -hmm. You see now how we did this. You can do this in other occasions as well. Question, but these are special screws. What do you use for that? No. Standard? It's, it's standard. Wooden stand screws? Yeah, standard wood screws. Yeah. Okay. Actually, and the, the, the stability um, of the whole thing, uh, the major part gives you the, the planking. Mm -hmm. And um, what we can have a look how we do the planking now. Okay. Okay, let's check. So, what we use here now for for the planking is OSB. Um, this is typically used in in the region we are here, and sometimes it's also plywood, and, and doesn't really matter uh, in the uh, application. Can you stop for? Yeah. So, for my understanding, this size is now 125. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so this is measurement, the norm. Exactly, 125, and and we we try to look. Uh, <coughs> that's why we use the the 62.5 um, okay. centimeters um, sequence yeah. to use these kind of boards without having to cut a each board again and again. And um, I begin now to fix the boards on the smaller side of the board normally we would use a, a screw um, sorry a nail gun or a staple gun to to fix it in our case uh, we just for this example we fix it with a with a screw and what I do now with the first plank this is really important that you align the angle of the whole element um, and so and make sure that your element is square all right and yeah it's good to make some some important markings uh, which help later on the, the to make the right cutouts and also the yeah and of course here also there are different ways of doing the um, connection to other elements uh, sometimes you let an overlap um, or, or inlet so here we have the door just for your orientation what I do now here is uh, measuring the position of the door and fix screw in the last board but normally they do that with with nail guns isn't it yeah yeah this mm -hmm. is uh, exactly so this is just for for our training room yeah. uh, we want to uh, disassemble it everything and uh, normally it's right we use uh, nail guns for that but i think now we come to a, a important uh, tool from festool because i think when we have everything planked we have to cut out the store and for that, I think it's uh, really nice to have the uh, TSC 55K, the, the new one. The newest version of cordless plunge cut saw, exactly. So this is a really perfect fit for f this kind of application for all the board cuttings. And uh, it's really nice when you work cordless, right. I guess. And we can have a look how we did it um, here. So, needless to say that you uh, should use a, a, a long guide rail, this really helps. Um, and if you have 
imagine these elements are really big up sometimes uh, several meters uh, five seven eight meters uh, depends on the element but there we have no cord and here with the newest generation of the plunge cut saw you work really safe we have this kickback feature safety feature and uh, especially when you cut in plunge in then maybe every um, everybody knows that yeah sometimes can happen that you have kickback so now the door is cut it out um I know Frank you are a joiner and <laughs> maybe you will criticize me when you see here the this my, my this over cross cuts my my cross cut so this is some maybe a difference between the joiners and the carpenters we this is a speed process it's about efficiency and then you just go a little bit over it then you can flip it out I yeah. understand, of course, this is this is clear to, to have here a faster work because after then you can uh, plank with a plasterboard, for example, or other, other materials. What I really like about the new saw is the, the, the speed to work with it because the, the, the new range of saw blades are really nice and you it's, it's going like butter. So you it's, it's uh, really fun to work you with You will that. find a lot of these uh, videos, application videos, from the newest uh, generation of the TSC 55K uh, yeah. on the YouTube channel Fisto TV and also Fisto Live in the last episode from the spring 2021. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so uh, nice videos, nice applications. Blanking is done, cutting is out done, cutting is out. almost done as well. That is exactly the point because I see here this rich pollen here on the top. And from my understanding, when we plank here, that we need also a space for exactly that one. Exactly, Frank. So mm. I need a jigsaw now. You can do it with a jigsaw, but <laughs> you can do it also with a handsaw if you like. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, but I will show you another way um, how to do that, and for especially for these narrow um, cuts, um, maybe you can change here. Yeah, so. Um, for these narrow cuts, we use here the plunge cut, uh, the sorry, the, the router, and here attached is um, a router bit with a ball bearing, and yeah, set the depths, and then I activate the dust extraction cap so that it's enclosed, then full speed for this routing application and then actually we are ready ready to go plunge in and then let the router do all the routing so you see here it's really easy process and um, great ergonomics of this routing um, of this router and um, we'll step out on the on the, the other side and you see here these narrow spaces if you imagine you have to work with a jigsaw and do all the markings and uh, or with a circular saw you are not really efficient so this is really efficient and you have a really nice um, result and as you can see on our example here it fits perfectly so i understand why you <laughs> use not the jigsaw because it's of course absolutely easy to do that yeah. you still have 2200 and you have perfect results after then yeah you can use that for windows also for doors if you like um depends how how your setup is but i really like the application to do it with a router so that yeah. is now mm. the gable wall uh finish yeah so now uh, actually we we have to do some more um walls to build a whole house and um but the, the whole process is only a repetition of yeah. that and similar uh, the same like that one yeah and you prepare everything and after everything is prepared, you can bring it to the job site. 
And this actually will be the second part of this episode where we bring these elements uh, and yeah, mount, together, like mount that together one. and then also the part with the roof and stuff. So stay tuned. There's more to follow. And um, thank you very much, Jose. It was uh, really nice yeah. to have a closer look on this carpentry side. And uh, thank you, Frank, for your <laughs> participation. <laughs> you are a great apprentice. Thank you. And you are <laughs> definitely hired. And uh, <laughs> yeah. See you next time. See you. Bye bye.